Hi, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is Allie Phillips. And I am with Manifested Harmony. That's the name of my company. And I'm going to be talking to all of you today about essential oils that can support animal shelter and veterinary workers. So for those of you who are here on the live webinar, if you could type in the chat, just introduce yourself, just indicate if you work or volunteer at an animal shelter or at a veterinary clinic, and if you're a Young Living member. I think we're gonna get a lot of Young Living members on this webinar. So go ahead and type in and welcome everybody on the live webinar. And I'm recording this, so welcome to anybody who's listening to the recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and I'm sure people are gonna join in as we go along, but I don't wanna hold anybody up who's come on already. All right, so just my little disclaimer here that the information that I'm sharing during this presentation is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And just remember that you are responsible for your health and wellness. So let me tell you a little bit about me first. So let's, <laughs> let's make this all about me for a moment. <laughs> um, but I think it's going to put this presentation in perspective and where I'm coming from um, and, and kind of help, help it make a little more sense. So I am a former prosecuting attorney. Uh, from Michigan. I spent um, many years in the courtroom prosecuting every imaginable crime against humanity and animals that you can imagine. And while I was a prosecutor, I started volunteering at my local animal control shelter. Um, and I actually did that for stress relief. And uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say it was the total opposite. Um, because it was a very um, struggling shelter. They had a very high euthanasia rate, and they also sold the shelter cats and dogs to research. And so after discovering that, I spent three years ending that practice. And it was a very uh, combative uh, campaign that me and a group of volunteers uh, took on. And so in addition to the trauma and stress of being a felony level prosecutor handling the worst cases that you can imagine, I offer suffered, I also suffered a lot of trauma and stress because I was working every night, about four to six hours every night and constantly every weekend to help those shelter animals, to get them out of there and to end this practice. So what it did, instead of being a stress relief, it actually compounded the stress that I was encountering in my work and it contributed to faster burnout. Um, so when we actually won that pound seizure campaign, which eventually did spin off and um, went all around the state of Michigan, and I've become a very big nationally recognized pound seizure um, advocate, but I lost so much professionally and personally that I, I literally went home and collapsed. And it was the beginning of a very long and arduous physical and emotional recovery, but it certainly wasn't the end of it because I ended up leaving the Michigan area and moving out to the Washington DC area to continue my work, but it was a very stressful move. It was not necessarily my choice to go out there, but it was something that I needed to do. And that compounded the stress. So I, I have spent my career working on behalf of animals in the courtroom. I was a lobbyist for animals. I still teach nationally. I go all across the country and I teach on animal protection issues and how it impacts um, humans. And all of this really culminated. And in 2005, I physically, emotionally, and mentally collapsed from all of the stress that I went through. So my wellness journey has 
really been very long. I mean, I'm now 10 years into it. And I tried everything from treating with naturopathic doctors to changing my diet. And all of that was fantastic. It certainly helped. And I got into energy healing techniques and became certified as a master teacher in three different modalities, in Reiki, in crystals, and in integrated energy therapy, and then created my business. And I now teach others how to do it. But all along, I was curious about essential oils. And I wanted to work with oils that would help shelter animals because that's always been my focus. But the oils that I had been working with for a decade or more, you know, the kind that you buy in the health food store, were not safe to use with animals. So that's how I found my way to Young Living because they're safe. And so I became very determined and I'm still very determined and dedicated to learning all that I can about how these oils work for my cats, to help shelter animals, to help the shelter workers and stressed out professionals, including veterinary professionals. Um, Because I'm very much into safety of these oils and that's why I love Young Living. And so it's the oils that really changed it all for me and helped me to start getting back into balance. Um, 11 months ago today, I left the DC area and I moved back home to Michigan. And that was a tremendous leap of faith that I am still in the middle of, which actually could have reignited the stress that I was under, but it hasn't because these oils have really kept me balanced. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about because When we make this a lifestyle, it can absolutely change your life. And so I'm very passionate about teaching shelter professionals and veterinary professionals because I have spent the last 15 plus years volunteering and spending time in animal shelters, primarily focusing on cats. And so I see what happens. It's happened to me. I see how stressed out. Um, and, and how that physically can take its toll on people. So let me first introduce my felines (laughs) before we get into the presentation, um, because these oils are even safe around animals, which is why I think it's very important for shelter workers to make sure that they're wearing things that are safe to be around animals. So Lucy is my 17 and a half year old cat who looks like she's three and she loves her oils. I have Jacob, who's 10, and Rudy, who is three years old, and we just celebrated our adoption anniversary together. So I'm going to talk about the stress that shelter, rescue, and veterinary professionals encounter every day, because when you recognize the stress signals, you can do something about it, and you can start working with the oils to help support yourself. So, you know, it's I give a lot of presentations on this topic to professionals that are in the field of helping animals because it's very, very easy to get burned out. And so I really like to start off by saying it is okay to admit that you have dark days. You know, we we have to move beyond the outward appearance of strength and really be honest when we're struggling because when you bottle it up, it's eventually going to come out and it's not going to be pretty. Trust me, I've been there and it's not pretty. And it can also be destructive to the point where you could lose your job. You could lose your friends, you know, and we, we actually see a lot of that destruction going on publicly in the media. We see it and it's because people are struggling. You know, it's okay to admit that you get angry You know, people do terrible things to animals, or sometimes they just don't do anything, and it ends up being neglectful. It's okay to get angry. My philosophy is better out than in. We've got to get it out, and this is where I'm going to talk about how oils can support you in that. And it's okay to admit that you want to hurt people who hurt animals. My mantra when I was a prosecutor was I do bad things to bad people. I used to joke about it. When somebody does something bad, 
I'm going to do something bad back to them because I'm going to convict them and I'm going to put them in prison. I do bad things to bad people. But people who work in a shelter environment or volunteer with a rescue group or work in a veterinary clinic may not feel that sort of power that I had as a prosecutor where I was actually very intricately involved in holding people accountable. And so sometimes you just want you just want to hurt people and that bottles up and I see it all the time on Facebook where people call for an eye for an eye. And if you're in that situation, you know, you likely have wanted that too. You know, it's okay to admit that you go home and cry. You know, maybe you you have far too many days when you go home depressed and despondent and crying and you just feel immobilized. And it's okay to admit that you can't take it anymore, that you just can't handle one more day, but yet you keep going in because of your love of helping animals, but it's taking its toll on you. And so it's okay to admit that you need help. And that's really where the healing process can start. So I want to talk just very briefly, you know, because I'm an energy worker and everything in our world is energy. You know, this computer that I'm talking into is made up of energy. I'm made up of energy. You're made up of energy. Our, my desk that I'm sitting at is made up of energy. Stress and emotions are made up of energy. And so everyone processes stress differently, but one thing in common is that stress has an energy to it that invades our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies. And some people are actually more empathetic than others, so they feel the stress and the emotions more strongly. And I find that people who are drawn to help animals are more empathetic, so we actually take it on more. And so the energy of what animals experience, it sticks to our energy, the energy of who you work with. You know, they may be struggling, they may be feeling negative, that sticks to us. The energy of people who don't care for their animals, that sticks to us. The energy of the offenders who harm animals, that sticks to us. The energy of the system that, you know, and I come from the criminal justice system and I've seen it work and I've seen it break. And that sticks to us. So no wonder we feel so down and depressed. We have to process this energy out of our system. Otherwise, it can physically impact us like it did me. Because if we don't process it, we stop helping. And then who suffers then are the animals who need us the most. So I'm going to just briefly talk about the different types of stress. So there's really no difference in whether you are paid to work at a shelter or you're a volunteer, you know, or you're a veterinarian or a vet tech or you're working at the front desk because we all take on different types of stress and we all respond differently. So vicarious trauma is actually secondhand exposure to trauma and you take it on because you care. So some people are more empathetic than others. I already talked about that. And so they energetically take on the pain of the animal and they can't let it go. They have big hearts. They envision and they dwell upon what the situation must have been like for the animal. And then that can actually manifest in nightmares. I mean, they literally take it on and they feel it. This actually can build up over time. So it's not just one event. So, you know, if this is you, you may end up working more, you know, to combat the trauma of the animals, but you're not helping yourself. And so it's important to shift and focus on, you know, how these animals, if they did survive, focusing on that they did survive and then you can help them. That's a way to get around it. Now, compassion fatigue is different. This is where you feel exhausted being surrounded by suffering. So you feel helpless, you feel hopeless, and you begin to isolate yourself as a coping mechanism. I mean, it's it's funny, I, I still to this day will make jokes on my Facebook page that I'm going to go hide in my blanket fort and I'm going to take my cats, my crystals and my essential oils and I'll come out in two days. And that's my coping mechanism 
because I still am in this field and I, I see way too much. And so when you care and it drains you, that's compassion fatigue. It's emotional exhaustion from observing suffering. And then burnout, this is physical and emotional exhaustion that can result from chronic stress. And the stress can come from having unrealistic expectations. I see this all the time. You know, people get involved in wanting to help animals. They go to vet school or they go work at a shelter and they think they can save every single animal. And then they're hit with the reality. And so that can cause burnout when you're poorly matched to the position that you're in or your job is too challenging or too boring. That can actually cause burnout when you're not appreciated, when you're dealing with difficult coworkers, when you just feel like you have no control, you can burn out. Now, you notice that these actually have nothing to do with animals, but yet we can get burnout when we're around the animals, but it has nothing to do with the animals. It's the people around the animals that can cause us to burn out. That lack of appreciation, dealing with difficult coworkers, that sort of thing. So vicarious trauma, compassion fatigue, and burnout are three very different types of stress. And I'm just going to lump them all together for this presentation as we talk about stress and then what we all can do to work with the oils to help us. So let me first talk about the physical signs of stress. So that's actually a photo of me during one of those moments when I was working and I was working on a case um, that was very traumatic and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was just face down in my keyboard. So some of the signs of stress that we physically can bring on are exhaustion, insomnia, headaches, and getting sick due to your work. So, you know, if you're comfortable, type in the chat of whether you've ever experienced any of those physical signs from being stressed out. You know, stress begins to deplete your adrenal glands that sit on top of your kidneys because your adrenals are flooding your body with the stress hormone, with cortisol, to help you cope. It's that fight or flight mechanism. That then impacts your brain, which then makes you struggle to make good decisions. So when the adrenals are overproducing because you're stressed, they can become fatigued and they can burn out. And so that's the feeling of exhaustion that a lot of us feel. And when that happens, it can impact all your other glands, your thyroid, uh, which uh, deals with metabolism, your pituitary, your pineal gland, so it can impact your sleep. And I know all of this because I've been there and I've had fascinating discussions with my naturopathic doctor um, who was in D.C. And, and really educated me on all of this. But, you know, when we have exhaustion, it's when we wake up in the morning and we're still tired. We're dragging our feet. We're exhausted all day. We come home and we collapse. We're basically working for the weekend. But then we're exhausted all weekend or we're running errands all weekend. And so when we start up again Monday morning, we're still exhausted. You know, we have trouble sleeping when we're exhausted. Um, we're more susceptible to being ill. We get sick more often. And, you know, somatization and hypochondria, you know, the emotional stress actually becomes physical in us. So these are some physical signs that you're under stress. Now, some behavioral signs that you're under stress can include all of these that you see on the screen, you know, because when we're suffering from stress, we often turn to things to help us feel better, things that give us comfort. I will be the first to admit that a bag of organic cheese popcorn or a big plate of mashed potatoes is my crutch. You sit me on the couch wrapped in a blanket with my cats around me and those comfort foods, and I am a happy camper. But that's, that's not very healthy to do. So, you know, what some people do is they start drinking alcohol more to take the edge off. Some will turn to drugs. Um, you start taking a lot of mental health days. So you're missing work. You have a hair trigger anger. The slightest thing sets you off. You know, things that you look back on 
and say, wow, that was really silly that I got angry. We, you know, we start to keep ourselves so busy that we avoid the issue. We avoid dealing with the stress. We have trouble making decisions. You know, we have that impaired ability. We start losing friends, coworkers, and become isolated because we feel so bad that even when we have an opportunity to go out and have fun, we can't. And sometimes it gets so bad that we quit. You know, the attrition rate is very high in working with animals. And you all, you're also just not as productive as you are in the past. Now, what are some psychological signs of stress? So you feel weighted down. You don't smile or laugh as often as you used to. You just want to go home and lock the door and crawl into bed. Those are all signs of depression. You distance yourself from others because you're so down. You just don't feel like you're good company. I mean, have you ever said that? Oh, I'd love to go out, but I'm just not good company tonight. I mean, we've all said it. And then you start feeling badly about yourself for feeling this way and you get a negative self-image. And, you know, you end up becoming numb to the stress. You know, I encountered this when I was a prosecutor. And I mean, this is a very graphic example, but I was on call one night and whenever there's a homicide, the prosecutor goes to the crime scene and a father had killed his 16 year old daughter in the driveway. And it was a very brutal killing. Um, and it, it was actually a cultural killing. I'm not going to name the culture it was, but it was a cultural killing. Um, and they were foreign nationals. She was actually killed as punishment for having ice cream with an American boy. And when I saw her body in the driveway, I actually had no reaction. I walked over her body and went to talk to one of the witnesses. And a detective came up to me and said, dang, you're cold. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. And that's when I started volunteering at the animal shelter to get you know, some stress relief and, you know, to kind of get back in touch with my softer side, because I am a very highly sensitive person, but I numbed myself. And that's what happens. You know, we also get cynical. You know, we get negative and cynical about everything. We play it off as jokes, you know, we, but we can struggle to see the silver lining in things. And we simply don't want to go to work and we resent feeling this way. And we also just don't feel ourselves. We, we don't feel that our work is bringing, you know, good to the surface. You know, we feel helpless in making a difference for these animals, especially if you're in a shelter and you just see the animals coming in and in and in every day. We start to lose interest in the things that bring us joy. We start to suffer from anxiety. We have more fear about the world. We can even have scary dreams and intrusive imagery during the day. And this absolutely can happen, especially if you are continuously exposed to crimes against animals, which shelter workers and veterinary workers are. And so we end up having extreme hypersensitive emotions. You know, we could be sitting at home trying to relax, you know, watching a Hallmark movie, which is my favorite thing. And one of those commercials come on and we start crying. And then we're like, why am I crying? <laughs> Because we're hypersensitive. It's a sign of stress. You know, but we also can lose hope that the animals will ever be protected. We start to lose hope, lose hope in humanity. We, you hear people say, I get along better with animals than people. They've lost hope in humanity. They have difficulty separating their work and their personal life. Even if they do go out to try to have fun, all they can talk about is animals and what they see. And they just don't nurture these outside interests. So, you know, all of this really contributes to stress. Then you add on top of it, whether you're in a shelter or in a veterinary clinic, the stress of euthanasia. I have a lot of shelter friends and veterinary friends. And I can tell you without a doubt, no one ever gets involved in helping animals to end their life. The whole no-kill movement makes me very angry. I am all for getting every animal in a loving home. But when my friends are called killers, that 
adds to the burden. So, I, I mean, there are great campaigns to help animals, but when we mudsling at each other in order to promote a cause, it hurts the people and it hurts the shelter and it helps the animals because frankly, who wants to adopt from or volunteer at or donate to a shelter that's called a quote, kill shelter. I correct people all the time, but the public doesn't understand. And, you know, we really have to be careful about what we call each other because we are putting the stress on those people who have to deal with terrible situations. Um, you know, cause the people who have to euthanize animals, they struggle with ending a life. They struggle with the public perception. They struggle with the depression and the hopelessness of having to do that. And sometimes it's a kind thing to do because some animals are suffering so badly. And then your families struggle with the work. You struggle with how you view human beings. Again, we say we get along better with animals than we do with people. That's a stress that comes from it. And when you're really compassionate, which people who go into working and volunteering with animals are the most compassionate people I've ever met, but it ends up being that more draining on you. And so just imagine for a moment that you had, that when you go to bed tonight and you wake up tomorrow morning, imagine you had to wake up knowing that you had to go into a place and euthanize animals. One animal, five, 50, a hundred. You can see how people become hardened and that stress impacts them. And then there's the stress, <laughs> I'm probably depressing you all, but there's the stress of animals that are abused and neglected. You know, so whether you're in a shelter or you're at the crime scene like I've been, or you're in the courtroom like I've been, when you deal with the abuse and neglect of animals, it is tough because guess what? We are their voice. You know, I train extensively on this. Um, at all types of conference. And I, I particularly train about animal abuse at child protection conferences to raise their awareness. And I, everyone that I have ever taught, tens of thousands of people have all told me that they can handle seeing photos of abused children, but they cannot handle seeing photos of abused animals. There is something about the voicelessness the helplessness and the true innocence of animals that traumatizes us. And so we can experience a lack of compassion towards people because it's people who abuse and neglect. We start to see the world as evil. I mean, if you just look on social media, there are countless stories every minute of animals in need. It's overwhelming. I've actually been spending less time on social media because of it. Because there are, there are times when I absolutely can help, and there are times that I can't. You know, last year I was doing a training in San Bernardino, California. I walked into an animal shelter just for the fun of it. <laughs> I should have known better. And there was a cat there who was sick. He was injured. He was not getting the care he needed. And I spent the next two days advocating for somebody to rescue him. And he did get rescued and he got better and he got adopted, but it consumed me. And, you know, it can be overwhelming for us. And when it becomes overwhelming and that stress is too much, we start to disconnect from humans. We can actually disconnect from the animals. And that's where you see people taking more time off from work. Um, you know, taking those mental health days. But we can even see it going the other direction where people engage in extreme behavior. They start to engage in criminal behavior because they feel it's the only way to help. You know, when you see a dog tied up in the backyard that's starving to death and nobody's helping and they go and they snatch that dog. Well, technically that's theft, but you start to see that. And this is how all the stress starts to build up. But then when we look at coping, we all know people who cope really well under stress and other people who crack like a potato chip. So here's the thing. When your personal life has these three characteristics of resilience, strength, meaning, 
and purpose and pleasure. You naturally have resilience that will help you in the workplace. And the three actually have to be experienced emotionally and cognitively to develop. So you just can't think it. You actually have to emotionally feel it. And resilience also comes from being surrounded by supportive people. So when we can put stress in perspective and not catastrophize it, our body can return to a natural state of wellness and heal itself. And this is where I'm going to talk about the oils because the oils can help our body maintain the balance and wellness that it deserves. And so when we think about, you know, resilience and what this is, you know, it's about believing in something bigger than ourselves, higher than ourselves. It's having faith. It's having hope. And I'm actually going to talk about an oil called hope. It's about being optimistic. Instead of dwelling on the problem, it's focusing on what you can do to make it better. It's forward thinking solution. It's, you know, when you start the day and go through the day and end the day, it's filling your mind only with thoughts of gratitude. And then you will be amazed at how resilient you can be because you are what you think. So, you know, I've dealt with this a lot in you know, the shelters that I've worked in and, you know, one, one particular um, cat orphanage in Alexandria, Virginia called King Street Cats is just the most amazing magical place you can imagine. And we don't even call it a shelter. It's a cat orphanage. And when cats would come in, it would be so easy. We would all look at each other like we really want to hurt this person for surrendering two 16 year old cats but then we would take a deep breath and realize thank goodness these cats came to us because there could have been a far worse outcome so it's finding that gratitude it's about getting moving you know i i have kind of a hilarious and a bizarre practice where i put on my 80s rock music and i just dance it out kind of aggressively uh, envision Jennifer Beals flash dance. And even though I've been a dancer my whole life, I'm not that good. <laughs> and it's more aggressive. It's almost like boxing. <laughs> but that when you get moving, that helps. You know, when you can sleep, and I'm going to talk about oils to help you sleep, that can help your body and your emotions repair themselves. You know, because when I was going through the trauma and the stress of being a prosecutor, you know, fighting pound seizure at the animal control shelter and the high euthanasia rate and, and all of that. I had to take Tylenol PM in order to sleep so that I could get up the next morning and go and prosecute these felons. Don't do that. <laughs> that is terrible. But I didn't know about the oils back then, but it was the only way that I could sleep. So getting good sleep is a good characteristic to help you cope better. Healthy eating. You know how I talked about the organic cheese popcorn and the mashed potatoes are my idea of a good night? <laughs> yeah, not healthy eating. Even though I say it's organic, it's like, eh. <laughs> when we eat healthier, we can cope better because our body is stronger. And having a spiritual practice, whatever that is for you, if it's praying, if it's meditating, if it's having faith, knowing that you can focus on something outside of yourself, higher than yourself, and call on that. That'll help you with coping. All right, so now let's dig into the oils, all right? So I wanted to lay that groundwork because if I were to just dive into the oils, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. So I wanted to lay that to show how the stress of working and volunteering in a shelter and working at a veterinary clinic can really, really add up. And so if you know somebody that's doing that, this is going to be recorded and I would encourage you to send them the link and I hope that they will listen to it. So there are different types of essential oils and I have found that what you pay is what you get. So for years, I used a variety of different brands of oils that I purchased, you know, at the local health food store or I found online. And other than smelling nice, they didn't do anything. You know, and I kept reading about them and it's like, yeah, these, I don't feel anything. You know, they smell good, 
but that was it. Once I learned about the different grades of oils and the chemistry of how the oils work, I then realized why they didn't work because they were low grade or perfume grade oils. So there's low quality oils that are synthetic or man-made. You know, a lot of them are floral waters um, that come out of the oil distillation process. And these are, these are oils that go into beauty products to scent them. So, you know, you find the hand cream that's scented like lavender. It goes into there. These oils have no therapeutic value. They just smell. Then there's perfume grade oils. And some of these, most of these contain chemicals or solvents because of how they were distilled, how they actually got the oil out of the lavender plant and got it into a bottle. So they've been altered. And this is very common. And when you think about, you know, when you go into like a, a home improvement decoration type store and they have those um, bottles that have oils in them and then they have the reeds sticking out of them, the reed diffusers, they look pretty. I had them for many years, but these are dealing often with perfume grade oils. And they're perfume grade because they can contain chemicals um, or toxins, I'm sorry, toxins, and they have cautions on them to not ingest them or apply topically. But here's the thing, if you can't ingest or topically apply an oil, do you really wanna be smelling it? Because either way it's going into your bloodstream. And this is where I started to really have these aha moments. And then there's natural or food grade oils. These are oils that you can cook with. So even if they're labeled or organic, they don't have a therapeutic value. You can just cook with them and they're going to flavor your food. And then at the top of the pyramid are the therapeutic grade oils. These are the young living oils. These are the oils that you can ingest. You can apply them directly to your skin. You can smell them. You can clean with them. You can cook with them. You can use them with animals. And that's what I'm going to be talking about, because when an oil is that pure to where you can drink it, it's going to help you on all levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. But here's the thing. You want to be cautious, because when you see oils with these warnings on them, trust the warning. If it says don't ingest, don't do it. If it says don't put on your skin unless you dilute it. Don't do it. But here's the thing. You're not going to see this with the Young Living Oils. The oils are actually going to recommend some of them to ingest. So when you see precautions like this, it's telling you that there is something other than the botanical that's on the label. So if it's lavender, there's something else other than lavender in that bottle. With Young Living, you get exactly what is on the label. And so this is why Young Living is the world leader in therapeutic grade oils. Because you can trust Young Living because they have their own farms. They have their own co-op farms. That map that you see there has all the little places where Young Living has distributed to, but it also has the areas where the farms are. Because Young Living wants to grow and distill and produce the oils themselves. And they do this through their seed to seal process. So Young Living has been around for, gosh, 22 years now. And their vision is to bring these essential oils into every home, every family, every lifestyle, every veterinary clinic, every animal shelter, to every animal. And they are, they are the only essential oil company that I know of that has a veterinary advisory council. And that should really tell you something. So the seed to seal process is where they select the best seeds. So seeds that were not grown, you know, with genetic modification, seeds that were not grown surrounded by chemicals and, you know, toxins and, um, you know, pesticides they pick the best purest seed. And then when they plant it, they plant it in the right location. 
You know, just because I have a lavender plant here in my yard in Lansing, Michigan, doesn't mean that it's the best place to grow lavender. So they plant and they grow in the right locations. They cultivate it the right way. They don't use any sort of weed killer. They pull weeds by hand. They cultivate at the right time and then they take all of those botanicals and they dump them in a distillery. You can see in that middle picture what it looks like. They distill with water. That's it. No alcohol, no solvents, nothing else. They distill with water. They test every 15 minutes to make sure that what they're distilling is what they think they're distilling. So if, if it's lavender and some other botanical sneaks in, they're going to throw the batch out. Because if it says lavender on the label, it's lavender. And then they seal it so that you know that what you get has been tested the whole way. This is why the Young Living Oils make such a huge difference. And you're going to see with the oils that I'm going to talk about next, what they can do for you. All right. So if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to put it into the chat. Um, Because now I'm going to talk about some specific oils. All right. So I'm breaking this up basically into five categories. The first category is how you can stay balanced with the day-to-day realities of working or volunteering in an animal shelter or working at a veterinary clinic. So these, I've used all of these. I never, ever recommend teach or talk about an oil or an oil product unless I have personally used it on myself and seen the benefits, okay? So I wanna say that up front. Acceptance oil. Let me put it this way. Young Living is brilliant at blending oils. We could all go to aromatherapy school and spend a lot of time and a lot of money learning how to blend, or we can just have Young Living do it. They blend like masters because they are they've been trained they know how to do this this oil called acceptance is amazing because when we need to accept a situation and get beyond denial this is the oil that you want to go to because bad stuff happens to animals it's hard it's hard it's hard when somebody comes in and says i have a five-year-old cat who's not using the litter box i want you to euthanize her Some veterinarians will, some will try to work with that cat and adopt it out. But when when we can get beyond denial and accept the situation, we can actually be better at taking action and changing the situation. But when we go into denial, we bury our head in the sand and we're not helpful. So this is an oil, you can smell it, you can apply it topically to wherever you're holding stress. And you can diffuse it. You can put it in a cold diffuser and diffuse it. So, I mean, it's got a lot of lovely oils in it. It has coriander, geranium, bergamot, frankincense, sandalwood, neroli, grapefruit, tangerine, spearmint, lemon, blue cypress, divana, lime, acotia, jasmine, matricaria, alang-alang, blue tansy, and rose. That's a lot of different oils but they are perfectly blended to work together to have this result. The next oil is Believe. And this oil does what the label says. I have been using this oil a lot lately. It is grounding, invigorating, and can actually help you believe and have faith. It can help you have strength to keep doing the work that you're doing. It can help you emotionally move beyond the emotional setbacks, It can provide clarity and relax you, and it brings a sense of peace. I love to diffuse this. I also like to wear it in place of perfume. So it's a blend of Idaho balsam fir, coriander, bergamot, frankincense, Idaho blue spruce, alang-alang, and geranium. And when you, you can research this on your own, but if you go and look at these individual oils to see what they do, you'll see how they were selected to work together for this result. It's really fascinating. Now forgiveness, this is a really important oil because when we struggle to forgive other people or even ourselves, this creates an energy in our body that can cause physical and emotional instability. So when we forgive, we free ourselves. It's a gift. 
that we give to ourselves. It has nothing to do about condoning what somebody else did. It's a gift for yourself. So this blend, it's very soothing, very uplifting. It can help you release hurtful memories. I use this whenever I find myself getting upset or judging other people. I apply it right over my heart. So it has it has an oil that is so incredibly sweet. It has Melissa oil in it. And Melissa is just such a sweet oil. So soft and so amazing. It also has frankincense, royal Hawaiian sandalwood, coriander, angelica, lavender, bergamot, lemon, alang alang, jasmine, roman chamomile, palmarosa, and rose. Now, rose is a very high vibrational oil. It's one of the highest vibrational oils out there that helps us when we talk about the energy, the energetic impact of the oils. Rose helps with grief. It also has frankincense in it, and frankincense works on the lung meridian, which is where we store grief. When you think about if you're crying really hard, sometimes you can't catch your breath because it's the lung meridian where we store grief. Forgiveness has frankincense and rose in it, so it can really energetically feel very healing for you. And then the other oil is hope because some days we just need to hang on to hope. And knowing that you're doing amazing work on behalf of animals, we need to use this oil. This blend can reconnect you to your own strength. It's grounding. It can restore your hope in what you're doing. It can balance your emotions, make you more open to see joyful things that happen. It can help you move away from dark thoughts. Because if we really get swallowed up by dark, negative, toxic thoughts, it's It's virtually impossible to see happiness that is happening right in front of you. And I've, and I've seen this a lot in working at a shelter. We get very focused on, you know, this dog or this cat is really suffering and we forget about the 20 or 200 other animals that are doing really awesome and they're great. This oil helps you stay balanced so that you don't go down that rabbit hole and spiral. I love to diffuse it. It's also great to use before you go to bed. So it has the Melissa oil in it that I talked about. It has myrrh and juniper and spruce. All right, let's go to the next category. When your emotions turn physical and they turn on you. So, you know, when you're dealing with negative, toxic, stressful, and sad emotions, your body can feel worn out and tired. This is why the massage and the energy healing world is really getting more popular as people struggle more in this world. So there's three oils that I have used that really help to soothe muscles and joints when you are emotionally dragging. So all of these are great to apply topically when you get home and before you go to bed. So pan away. So this one actually comes in the starter kit with Young Living, which is great. And it actually smells a little bit like Ben Gay, but better. It tingles. It feels warm when you put it on. And it was created for use after exercise. And But it's going to be really great for you after some long days where maybe you felt like you ran a marathon. So I like to apply it to my neck, to my shoulders, you know, any place where you feel that you need some, you know, physical relief, you can just apply it directly. One drop goes a long way. It's a blend of wintergreen, helichrysum, clove, and peppermint. Deep relief. Now this one comes in a roll-on, which I love. And I, I really use this one every day. It's really handy. It's very thin. You can put it in your pocket. You can keep it on you when you're, when you're on the job. It really penetrates. It feels refreshing and cooling and invigorating because it's a blend of peppermint, wintergreen, dorado azul, and helichrysum. Do you see a theme here with the peppermint, wintergreen, and helichrysum? Those are really good physically, um, physical oils to use. So I like to apply this before I go to bed. And the name says it all, Deep Relief. It is amazing. Orthosport is also amazing, and it's actually a massage oil, but it's infused 
with essential oils. So it has high phenol oils in it that actually provide a warming sensation. So it's it's a great relieving um, oil for tired mu muscles. So it's a blend of, it's got a lot of different um, carrier oils in it, like coconut oil, grapeseed oil, wheat germ oil, sweet almond oil, olive oil, but it also has wintergreen, peppermint. Are you, are you catching a theme here with the wintergreen and the peppermint? And it also has eucalyptus in it. It really smells good. It really does. Um, and because it's um, already uh, diluted in other carrier oils, you can slather this on anywhere you need it. Because when your emotions turn physical, this is when we can really have trouble turning off those emotions and turning off those thoughts when we get home. And it can we can struggle with sleep. So let's talk about how you let go when you get home. So let me talk about the release oil. So the release oil can really help release pent up emotions, which energetically can relate to physical issues that you're having in your body. So it can balance the body. It can balance the mind and the emotions. I, okay, don't laugh at me, but I actually like to apply this to my throat because <laughs> I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but in this work, Sometimes you just want to punch somebody in the throat, don't we? It's like, what do you mean? You're surrendering your 15-year-old dog. What do you mean? We need to release it. So I like to put it on my throat, okay, when I get home so that I can release it, so that I don't bottle it up there. Um, I've actually used the release um, oil with my cat, Jacob, who needed to release losing three homes before he came to me. And it worked brilliant on him. So this is a blend of a lang, -a -lang um, geranium, sandalwood, grapefruit, tangerine, spearmint, lemon, blue cypress, um, divana, lime, akatia, jasmine, matricaria, blue tansy, and rose. There's that rose again. So release really does what it says. I also like to put it on the bottom of my feet. You're going to see a lot of these I put on the bottom of my feet. I don't necessarily put them on all at once, um, but a lot, your feet have the best sensors for taking in the oils. And I like putting the release on the bottom of my feet before I go to bed so that I'm releasing as I'm sleeping. Stress away. Now, this one comes in the starter kit and the name says it all. It has a unique stress relieving combination of lime and pure vanilla. And it really induces relaxation so that you can let the day go and have a peaceful night. This is perfect for diffusing. You diffuse it, your home will smell like a spa. It smells amazing. And then the third oil is trauma life. So this one really can help you to release buried emotional trauma that has resulted from accidents or neglect or the death of a loved one an assault or abuse or a being around animals that have suffered all of that. So it's a blend of valerian, lavender, frankincense, sandalwood, rose, helichrysum, spruce, geranium, divana, and um, yep, that's, that's all that's in it. So this is a great oil. Again, you can smell it, you can apply it topically. With all of these, you can just put a drop in your hand, put your hand over your nose and just breathe it in. That's called aromatherapy. You can just breathe it in that way, or you can put it in a diffuser, or you can apply it topically. There, there's no wrong way to use these, but Trauma Life, I feel, is one oil that really should be in every animal shelter and every veterinary clinic, not only for the staff, but for the animals. Okay, so you've released. Now let's talk about how you get a good night's sleep. Well, lavender, I think we all agree lavender is great. It's relaxing, um, energetically, it can calm you down. It's, it's cooling because when you're angry, anger, anger is hot. 
We need to cool it down to calm you down. And so that's what it does energetically. And it really stabilizes the heart, can help you release any pent up energy. So it helps you relax into a good night's sleep. Dump it on your head, smear it everywhere. <laughs> You'll smell awesome. I mean, you just, you can't use this a wrong way. So you can apply it, smell it, diffuse it. Frankincense. All right, this is a new one. And Barb, you're on this webinar. She, she told me this last week. Put frankincense on the bottom of your feet before you go to bed. And Barb, you were right. I have had amazing sleep. So frankincense is known as the meditation oil. So think about it. For people who are good at meditating, some are better than others, when you meditate, you're relaxed. Your body relaxes, your mind relaxes. So of course this is going to be great to help you sleep. So it, it has an uplifting aroma, um, but by uplifting, I don't mean it's going to keep you awake. Um, it's uplifting, like joyfully uplifting, but it's very comforting. It's like a warm blanket. So this is amazing. Put it on the bottom of your feet and it you will be amazed. And then Idaho balsam fir. I just started doing this um, the last couple of nights and it's amazing. Like the frankincense, it's very grounding very relaxing, very calming, because when you think of a, a tree, you know, a fir tree, they're strong, they're stable, they are rooted in the ground. That's exactly what this oil is. You are rooted, you are grounded. So none of those, you know, thoughts, you know, whirling through your head that keep you awake. It's calming, it's rooting. So when you have one of those days where you just can't settle down and you need to sleep, Go for this one. Go for the Idaho balsam fir. It smells great. It's amazing. And then Ruta Vala. Some people love the smell. Other people don't. I actually like it. Um, but this is the one that you could go to when you're so wound up and nothing else will work. It's a blend of rue oil, valerian, and lavender. And there is something about the valerian that this will help you find that good night's sleep. So again, you can apply these topically. You can just put a drop in your hand and smell it. You can put a little bit underneath your nose so that you smell it right before you go to bed. You can put it in a diffuser. Remember, it has to be a cold diffuser because heat will kill the therapeutic value. Use a cold diffuser. This is why Young Living gives a diffuser with every starter kit. And then it'll fill your bedroom with the scent. So it, it's a really great way to get a good night's sleep. All right, last category. Now let's talk about feeling good so that you can actually wake up feeling good. You can start the day feeling good. You can go through the day feeling good so that you come home feeling good. So I'm going to talk about four oils that I really love, and I use these frequently. So Inner Child, this blend was actually created to support children who had been mistreated. Some days we may feel like that, right? So this blend can support you in reconnecting with who you really are, you know, your authentic self, that inner child that everybody talks about, you know, that inner child that loves animals and wants to help, but doesn't want all the baggage that comes with being an adult. I like to wear this in place of perfume. It's a blend of orange, tangerine, alang alang, royal Hawaiian sandalwood, jasmine, lemongrass, spruce, bitter orange, and neroli. I have never met anybody who doesn't like the smell of inner child. It smells awesome. And you really feel free. You, I mean, you feel like a child. You want to go outside with your rain boots and jump in the mud puddles. You feel free. And that's a fun person to work with that, that feels like that. So this is a great oil blend. Another one is joy. I wear joy every day. I don't care what's going on in my life. I'm wearing joy. It smells amazing. It's a blend of um, bergamot, 
a lang lang geranium, lemon, coriander, tangerine, jasmine, Roman chamomile, palmarosa, and rose. This is your emotional support oil. Energetically, it can help you with grief and loss. I like to wear it in place of perfume, and this oil should be diffused in every single shelter, in every veterinary lobby area, because it creates a comforting environment. It can take the edge off. It just, it brings joy. And if you're at a veterinary clinic, I mean, sometimes people are there for sad reasons. Let's give them a little bit of joy. When people come to an animal shelter, we want them filled with joy so that they will go and adopt or donate or volunteer. This absolutely should be diffused in all of these situations. Peace and calming is another great oil. It's a gentle, sweet blend. It creates a very relaxing environment. It helps you get quiet and settle down. It's one of the most popular blends at Young Living to the point where it went out of stock last year and it was a catastrophe worldwide. People panicked, <laughs> but it's back in stock now. And there's actually two different versions of it in case if one goes out of stock. But this is actually an excellent blend for animals that are struggling with emotions. Emotions for being sick and at a vet clinic or emotions for being in a shelter. And so it helps us too. I feel that this is an absolute must for diffusing at the end of the day. And again, this is another one that should be diffused in shelter lobbies, veterinary lobbies, or in areas that are tense, where you have a, you know, a lot of trauma and stress going on. So it's a beautiful blend. It's got tangerine and orange, a lang lang, patchouli, and blue tansy. And last but not least, Valor. This is one of the most popular blends. And again, this went out of stock last year and it was panic worldwide, but it's now back in stock. Young Living created a farm so that we wouldn't run out of the um, botanicals. But this is the oil that can help you boost your emotions. It's calming. It helps you feel strong and courageous. I mean, look at the name, Valor. When we are working on behalf of animals, we are warriors for them. We are speaking for them. We need to put that coat of armor on. Valor is a great oil to really support you in that. So it helps you greet the day with positivity. It helps you unwind at the end of the day with positivity. It's really one of the best sellers because of how amazing you will feel. It's a blend of black spruce, rosewood, blue tansy, and frankincense. All right, so I would love to know, type in the chat, I would love to know which of these oils instantly appealed to you when I was talking about it because everybody you know really gets attracted and appealed to something different so you know feel free to share in the chat what has appealed to you the most so let me talk about how you can get these oils and I know many of you on the call are with Young Living but if you're not with Young Living or if you're listening to the recording and you're not with Young Living, here's the thing about Young Living. When you join as a member, it, it's like joining Costco or Sam's Club where you pay and you get a membership and you go in and you get discounted prices. But Young Living's better because you don't just pay to get in the front door. You actually get a starter kit with 11 oils. And so on the screen, you see what the starter kit is. You get 11 oils, you receive peppermint, lemon, copaiba, thieves, which is a great blend. Um, you receive um, RC, purification, frankincense, digize, lavender, and pan away. And you get a bonus oil of stress away. You get some samples, you get some little bottles so that you can share samples with your friends, and then you get to pick a diffuser at the bottom. So here's the great thing about this kit. It really covers a lot of different things. And once you get your kit and you become a member, you get 24% discounted prices 
as you are using the oils, you'll need to replace them. So you get the discount, which is amazing. This month in February, they just announced it yesterday, they're giving a 10% discount on starter kits. So where you see the prices at the bottom, you take 10% off. So that's amazing. And it's all because Young Living really loves us. And they want these oils to get in the hands of people who, who need them. They need them physically. They need them emotionally. So you can pick your diffuser um, and get your kit. And when you sign up and join my team, I'm going to give you a $25 gift card. So you can either buy more oils or you can buy educational resources. You can do whatever you want with it. You will get added to a private Facebook page because my um, oil team is called Perma Stay Oils. And we do a lot of education. We talk, we chat, we share, and we have a bunch of animal people. In fact, 99% of my team is animal people. Um, but we also have a lot of professionals that are, you know, high, high stress, very high level professionals. And we all work together and help each other. So this is a great month to uh, to really get started with Young Living. Um, let's see. We have a question here. Can you earn essential reward points on starter kits? Um, yes. No, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. It, um, you have to order it separately. It can't go in through Essential Rewards. Great question. I actually had to catch myself there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not an option through Essential Rewards. So the question is, um, what is Essential Rewards? So Essential Rewards is when you become a member of Young Living and you're using the oils, and this really is a lifestyle. You use them every day. And I am not kidding. People think I'm joking. I use up to 20 oils or more a day. And it's really helped me. I mean, you guys all heard at the beginning what I've gone through in my career in working with animals, and it's really, really helped me. And so the Essential Rewards Program is a monthly auto ship. You can change up your order every month. My order just went in um, yesterday. I always go in on the first of the month. But you start earning a percentage back and you earn points that you can cash in for free products. And last year alone, I earned almost a thousand points in free products. That's basically a thousand dollars in free products. That's how it works. It's amazing. And you get reduced shipping. So it's, it's an awesome program and you never run out of the oils when you need them most because there is nothing worse than when you want to get a good night's sleep and you realize, oh my gosh, I don't have my lavender or, you know, I don't have the Ruta Vala or the frankincense or the Idaho balsam fir. And you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? So it's a great program. You never run out. And so by getting involved with these oils, these therapeutic grade oils, you're helping yourself. And when you help yourself, you can help more animals. Because I've been there where I've been burned out and I had to step away. And it was hard because then you suffer from the guilt of I need to be there. I need to help. But we got to take care of ourselves first. And these oils can really support you and help you stay balanced. I, I just can't express enough how they've helped. Because this is what you're going to look like. When you're on Young Living Oils, you're going to be this relaxed like my cat, Jacob. <laughs> he gets oiled up every day. He loves the oils. You will feel amazing. So, all right, before I close, I'm going to let you guys think if you have any more questions. But I have a couple of more upcoming oil pet classes. Um, a couple are in person. Let's see, I have um, online next Tuesday, I'm gonna actually go into the starter kit oils. So if you're interested, hop on that. I'm gonna talk about the starter kit oils and what they can do for you. Um, on February 15th, if you're here in Lansing, Michigan, I'm doing an in-person essential oils for cats class. I did the webinar last week. If you wanna get the link to that off of my YouTube page. On the 16th, I am doing a webinar on essential oils to support the shelter and rescue animals. Okay, so that's going to be different than this one. So you're going to want to register for that. 
And then on Monday, March 7th, I'm going to be over at Annabelle's Pet Station talking about essential oils for dogs. So you just go to yldis.com slash manifested harmony, click on events. When you register, um, I have your email and I will add you to the webinar. All right. Questions, people. Questions. Ask your questions. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the webinar. Thank you. Oh, and I went over. Darn, I wanted this to just be an hour. I'm sorry. I went over by by 10 minutes here. I try to try to keep it <laughs> try to keep it on time. Oh, best class ever. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about this. We we've just got to We've just got to get these oils into us. All right. I'm not seeing any more questions, but if you do, feel free to email me. And thank you so much, everybody who joined in live. And thank you to everybody who's listening to the recording. All right. I will, uh, I'll talk to you guys later on the next webinar. Thanks for joining.